Hello, this is Tafos and Freya reporting from Chandera at school about the death of Stephen Hawkins. Yesterday, one of the greatest scientists to ever live, Stephen Hawkins, passed away aged 76. He peacefully died in his home in Cambridge while sleeping. It is known that he suffered from amyotrophic lateral scoliosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. His beloved ones described him as an extraordinary man whose work and legacy will live on for years. Today we will be interviewing people to tell us their opinion to Stephen Hawking's death and the impact it has had on the global world science. How do you feel about the death of Stephen Hawking? Uh, I obviously think it's very sad because he was a great man, um, but he had um, a very successful life and a longer life than he expected to have. So although I think it's sad, um, I think that uh, he had a great life and that's important. Do you think that he was one of the world's greatest physicists? Yes, absolutely. I know very little about physics, um, but he's obviously had an incredible career and his work on black holes um, has been revolutionary. The black hole theory was one of the most famous theories that Stephen Hawking has ever made. Miss, how do you feel about the death of Stephen Hawking? Well, I think I think he did tremendously well considering he was only given a few years to live when he was given the diagnosis of motor neuron disease. I think I think in situations like that where somebody's given so much to a particular field, be it science or art or, or whatever, I think it's sad when somebody passes, but at the same time what they've given will carry on going forever. How do you do you think he was one of the world's greatest physicists? I'm not a huge expert in physics. From the modern day, absolutely, and from what I understand of his understanding of nuclear physics and this, um, astronomy, or etc., I think he's, yeah, probably is, particularly in the modern day. Hi Miss, um, how do you feel about the death of Stephen Hawkins? I think it's a real shame to the science world. He has such an influence. Lots of the ideas in science that we've got today have come from him. So yeah, I think it's going to be really sad for the science world and the world as a whole. Yeah. Do you think he was one of the world's um, greatest physicists? Definitely. Like I said, the ideas that we've got for him are going to be ones that we can use forevermore. So he definitely has had a lasting effect on the science world. Thank you. It's clear Stephen Hawking was a great influence on the world. Thank you for listening back to the studio. Hello and welcome to the BBC News School Report. And today we're going to be talking about the big local issues about the Horton Hospital. The Banbury Horton Hospital is planning to close down its maternity wards due to lack of government funding. Thousands of people around Banbrookshire are fundraising to make money to save their local hospital. If people don't succeed in raising enough money, the, the nearest hospital is 30 minutes away. Today we have invited Ms Ball and Mr Ward in to interview on their view about this issue. On a daily basis, I suppose it wouldn't really affect my family too much. But I've got a young boy, six years old, and like most young children, they want to explore and climb trees and things. And I'd be a bit worried that if he fell off and injured himself, I'd have quite a far journey to go to a hospital. If the Horton's closed, he's broken arm, he needs an ambulance or something, it's quite a journey to have to take him. What, what, what are your thoughts on closing the Horton Hospital? Uh, I think it's ridiculous, really. Uh, Banbury's a growing town. Uh, it's been growing since I moved here in the 90s. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We need a hospital. If, if people are suffering, uh, heart attacks and pregnancies and whatever they may be, having to travel to the whole, uh, Oxford, it's, it's too far to go. It's too far to go. We need a hospital in Banbury. What are your thoughts on the closing of Horton Hospital? Um, I think it's a great shame for the area because obviously if there's any medical emergencies um, and or any treatments that patients need, they'll have to go much further for treatment. So either to Oxford 
or to um, Northampton, that's the other one isn't it, so local people are going to have to travel further and obviously if there's a medical emergency um, they're not going to have as much time. What are w one of the consequences on the Horton closing regards your pregnancy? So it doesn't quite affect me because um, I haven't got that long left and I, I believe the closures are going to be sort of later on. However, um, for my pregnancy, because I'm a low risk pregnancy, I'm able to have my baby at the Horton. However, if I was high risk, then I'd be referred to, um, again, uh, Northampton um, and that's because they don't have the staff there to deal with um, emergencies, so if there's an emergency in pregnancy, um, it's a midwife only unit, therefore you haven't got the sort of assistance unless you really, sort of really need it. Good morning and welcome to the BBC News Report. Today Jess and Alyssa are talking about gender equality. They are now going to be interviewing Mrs Dixon, a teacher at Chender at School. Do you think there is gender equality in this school? Um, I think, yeah, I think we do have gender equality here. I think that um, classes are mixed gender. Um, the subjects that are setted aren't set by gender. Um, I think that there's equal opportunity in terms of like, careers advice. So I think we're really lucky nowadays and in Chenderit with our equality. Is there a pay gap, or in, in your opinion, is there a pay gap between male and female teachers? Um, I don't think in the majority of teachers there is, because we have something called um, like the main pay scale and the upper pay spine, and they are set uh, pays for teachers, and each year you've worked or each thing you've um, achieved, you get... Um, you know, that you get put up on runs and that's equal. I was reading something in the news in the last couple of weeks that there is pay gap between um, male and female head teachers and deputy heads. Yeah. So apparently in leadership there is um, a gender inequality in pay. Yeah. Do you think boys get opportunities in PE, EG, better equipment, contact rugby and other sports? Ooh. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I must say I don't know much about uh, uh, the way that the PE works here. I know that um, we do have sports teams for boys and girls. I'm, I'm not aware that there's better equipment for boys and girls, but I, but I must say I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. Do you think gender equality could change how people think about school? Yes, I think it absolutely could. I think... Um, there was a long time in education where girls were told um, that they shouldn't be doing maths and science subjects, they shouldn't go into engineering, and you can see that in the fields of engineering and maths and things it's like that. And the same with boys um, being pushed away from doing like nursing, um, care working, social work and those things. So I think by constantly being told that you need to adhere to these stereotypes that women should be caring and men should be practical, that, yeah, it could absolutely affect how you think about school. Do you think there is sexism in this school? Um, yes, I do. I don't think from the staff, but I think there's definitely some sexist attitudes amongst some students. And that's something that we as teachers, and certainly myself as head of learning, are really, really keen to challenge. So I think there's a lot of um, like sexist language sometimes used. Um, calling people names that refer to, you know, oh, you throw like a girl, and things like that, which actually I think is quite sexist, and that's the sort of thing that we need to make sure that we're aware of so that we can all be the best people we can be. Yeah. Thank you for watching our interview. See you soon. Good morning, and welcome to our news. Today we'll be discussing the incident involving KFC and the lack of on February the 17th, KFC reported that they had in fact run out of chicken. A lot of restaurants have been shut down, 600 KFCs to be precise. This sparked a lot of outrage on social media and industry. KFC has received thousands of negative comments on their business day. A couple of days later, KFC released an advert trying to find the funny side, funny side of it. This led to a lot of positive publicity. 
So why did KFC run out of chicken? Well, they uh, they changed suppliers from Midwest Logistics to DHL and Partner QSI. The decision um, led to many stores closing due to the lack of chicken. So what did they do to get the C back in KFC? Well, they decided to work with both to help DHL get their restaurants back to normal as soon as possible. We asked students what they thought about the KFC problem and 90 of, 100, 90 of 100 students said they are upset. Thankfully it's all back to normal and we have our KFC back. So I'm here with Janet, a lovely member of our canteen staff. So Janet, what would you do if the canteen ran out of supplies? Well, hopefully we wouldn't run out of supplies but if we did we would improvise with um, the stuff we've got in stock, like uh, flour, we wouldn't run out of flour or anything like that. So we'd make different things and things with rice dishes and hopefully you'd, we'd find something to do. So, do you think that fast food chains should keep on top of food supplies like the KFC running out of China? Well, I would have thought so, yeah. A bit concerned like that, I would have thought that um, I don't know why they got into trouble like they did. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the One O'Clock News. I'm Elia with my colleague Rebecca. Firstly, we will be interviewing two teachers from Tyndale School and then speaking to a university student from Oxford. Over to Ollie at Tyndale School. Do you feel like starting school at 10.30 will help students concentrate? Actually, I don't agree with that statement. I believe that children should start early. I think we're more, we've got more of a problem with the time that children are going to bed, and I think that's the issue. Rather than changing the school day, I actually believe that children should be going to bed earlier, and what's preventing them from going to bed earlier, so that they're not sleepy in the morning. Would you as a teacher benefit from starting at 10.30? Absolutely not. I love my mornings. I think I'm fresh. I know everybody else would be fresh. If they went to bed at 9 o'clock, they would have the life force energy to help their body and support the systems. I deal with a lot of well-being and it's definitely supported me. Okay. Thank you for your time, Miss Smart. You're very welcome. Do you think it will help students remember things better because they are more awake? Yes, absolutely. I think that one of our biggest problems in school is students not being able to focus and concentrate because they're too tired. So if they had more sleep, they'd be more awake and I think they'd learn better. Would you be happy if we started at 10.30 and finished at 5? I would be happy and I think that if it meant that students could get more sleep, um, it would really um, benefit us. And I think that teachers wouldn't mind because we tend to be here until five o'clock anyway. But I could see um, it would cause problems with parents. Because if you had a child at primary school and they were starting at nine and finishing at three and you had a child at secondary school, it could really affect your day. So I can see kind of the pros and cons. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Molly. Do you feel like starting school at 10.30 will help you concentrate? Mm, yeah, I reckon it will because if you wake up in the morning and then you function yourself and you can have some breakfast, have a relax, you'll be functioning to get ready to work and concentrate. But if you're like a not an early morning person, you'll be all dopey and stuff. Do you think it will help students remember things better because they are more awake? Uh, yeah, I reckon it will because if you're in a better state, you'll kind of like be like. I would say determined, but like ready to learn, but and like ready to remember stuff. But if you're like tired and stuff, you'll just want to relax and pretty much anything. Would you be happy if we started at ten thirty and finished at five? Uh, no, most probably not, because if you have younger siblings or something, it'd be a bit awkward. Your parents trying to get you like at five and then siblings at three. And also, if you do like have an after school or you have an after school club, you won't get home till about half six and then that will make you pretty tired. Okay, thank you for your time, Freddie. No time. Now over to Faith at Oxford University. I'm here with Sarah at Oxford University. How would you feel as a student about starting university at 10.30? I feel like it would be a really good idea. I feel like most young people function better later in the day.
day so having that extra time to get the sleep and sort of feel wake up feeling refreshed and better so i think it would be a really good idea okay thank you thank you for watching see you soon hello and welcome to today's bbc school report my name is Marley and today's main headline concerns Chinderic School's canteen. Do you think the prices are fair in the canteen? Yes. How often do you buy food? About twice a week. Do you think the food is appropriate for our age groups? Yes. Would you give this food to your children? Yes. How can we improve the canteen? Car is really pretty good already. Okay, thank you. Do you think the prices are fair in the canteen? It's very difficult for me to answer that question because actually I don't purchase anything from the canteen myself. But listening to other students, they tell me that they think some things are very expensive. Water, the idea of um, the burgers and things seem to be expensive. And I know that other students have said to me that when they purchase something like a bacon roll, they only really ever get one piece of bacon in the roll, and therefore they think that makes it expensive. But myself, I don't actually purchase anything myself from there, so I don't have any personal view about that. I agree. How often do you buy food? Me, at home, pretty much I go shopping every week weekend. I'm not one of these people that sort of like go shopping uh, every month or something. It's pretty much every weekend, but I don't purchase any food from school. Do you think the food is um, a prox... Uh, what does it say? Appropriate. Oh. Okay. You can start the question again if you want. Okay. Um, do you think the food is appropriate? Now, I've had lots of discussions with my colleagues about that because I think some of it is excellent. I think the idea of some healthy, light, quick food snacks are really good. But I also know that a lot of students eat at break time more than lunch time. And they go and purchase food at break time and have that as their sort of like them because they're hungry. So I suppose in one way, a snack type food such as a burger or a bun or a, so in a hot dog is quite quick to eat, but it's not the healthiest. Whereas the wraps and the salads take some time to get made. So, you know, it's sort of like you have to go back at lunchtime once you've ordered it. So I think there's a good balance, but I'd like to see more healthy food. Would you give the food to your children? That's a really good question. Who, who came up with that question? That's an excellent question. What about that? That's, I'm going to have to stop and think about it. Occasionally. Not, not every day. If I, as a parent, if I felt that my ch children were eating, say, a burger and a bun or a hot dog every day, I, I would be concerned. Mm. Um, how can we improve the, the canteen? Another great question. Really good questions I'm being asked here today. Um, I think we could probably try and make it a little bit more organised so that people don't feel that they're so squashed in. And people who want to have a main meal can go and collect that main meal a little bit more easily. And I think that people who want to order and have a panini or something, that they're cooked more more quickly or more of them, so more eat, heating devices to heat up because I think they take a long time. Some students order it and then just as the bell goes, they get it handed to them, which is really difficult for them because they've paid their money and then they, yet they don't have a chance to really enjoy eating it. So more things to cook the paninis, better organisation at the hot food server and more people on tills I think would improve it. Are we going to change the canteen um, any anytime soon? When you say are we, are you a student or us as staff at school or um, you. me? Uh, it's not on our agenda to change it because actually the canteen is run by an external company and they would want to either suggest the changes themselves or we'd have to go through a negotiation to get any changes done because we don't own the canteen um, process ourselves. It's run by an independent company. So we'd have to negotiate quite a bit if we were going to do changes. Doesn't mean it doesn't, couldn't, you know, it might not happen, but we'd have to talk for some time before the changes went ahead. Okay, thank you. Do you think the prices are fair in the canteen? Some of them, but not all of them. How often do you buy food from the canteen? Probably about two or three times a week. Do you think the food is appropriate for our age groups? 
And some bit, yeah, but some bit no. What do you think not? I think that most people won't get salads, so I don't know why we have salads. And then I don't think, I think everyone just buys cakes all the time, and then the burgers. How can we improve the canteen at the school? I probably make the aisles longer because at the moment there's just one little aisle and everyone just barges right in front of that and then I'd probably make that longer and maybe add more tills. Okay, thank you for your time. As in our, in our interviews, we have mixed opinions on the canteen. Overall, we can see that the improvements are lowering the prices, making the aisles bigger and more time to get and eat food.